Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham, coming to you from Boise, Idaho. Professor has a confession, and maybe we'll get to hear it in just a moment, as they've gone ahead and they've regained control of the ship. Now, as we get started here with part three of... uh, Professor Thorpe's Bathosphere, I want to encourage you to check out Laser and Sword Magazine. If you enjoy uh, old-style serial fiction, you'll enjoy Laser and Sword, which brings you new serial fiction for the 21st century. We're hard at work on issue four and hope to have that out as well as our annual issue uh, sometime next month. Uh, But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into Professor Thorpe's Bathosphere Part 3. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look at the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, valiant, courageous fighter for truth and justice, who has come from the planet Krypton with a physical structure never before attained by mortal man. Superman, who can bend steel in his bare hands, race a speeding bullet to its target, and who mingles with ordinary men disguised as Clark Kent, newspaper reporter. When we last saw Kent, he and Professor Thorpe, noted scientist and inventor of the bathysphere, a new deep-sea diving bell, had regained possession of the Juanita, the professor's ship, by overpowering a man named Wolf Cleland, who was masquerading as the ship's captain, and by rescuing Maddox, the real captain, from the hold. As our story continues today... Kent, Professor Thorpe, and Captain Maddox are in the radio room aboard the Juanita. Suddenly a light on the control panel blinks and a signal comes out of the loudspeaker. Listen. Bring the SS Juanita. Bring the SS Juanita. Come in. Throw the switch, Kent. Answer him. SS Juanita answering. Come in. Sparks, this is Escobar. Now listen close. Tell Cleland to bring the Juanita into port at Maneo. Midnight. I want you both to meet me at the Paradise Cafe and the waterfront. You got that? Come in. Yes, I got it. Is that all? That is all right now. Cleveland is to anchor the ship in a quiet section of the harbor, where it won't be seen. He'll get the rest of my orders when I see him at the cafe. Just don't make any more mistakes. Signing off. Well, what do you think of that, Professor? I hardly know what to say, Ken. Who is this Escobar person? I know him, Professor. You do, Captain? Well, who is he, Maddox? Well, I don't know him to speak to, but I've seen him. He hangs out at Wolf Cleland. And he's dynamite. Hey, by the way, where is Cleland? What? Oh, he was here a moment. Ken, Captain, he's escaped. <laughs> oh, no, he hasn't. I had him thrown into irons. Oh. Professor, are you sure you don't know why Cleland and Escobar are after your ship? No, Kent, I, I don't. A little while ago, you mentioned that you had a confession to make. You said it would clear up this mystery. Yes, I said that, but I was wrong. That confession is a private matter. I'd, I'd rather not talk about it now. I see. Well, then we're just as much in the dark about all this as we were before. Yes, I'm afraid so. Wait. I've got, I've got an idea. What? He's taking a chance, but it might work. And if it does, we'll get to the bottom of this mess. What is it, Kim? Look here. Cleland was able to masquerade successfully as Captain Maddox... With only a bandage covering part of his face, he fooled you and the crew. Yes, that's true. Well, then, what's to prevent Captain Maddox from masquerading as Cleland? Me pass as Cleland? Sure. Oh, that don't make sense. Oh, yes, it does, Captain. You and Cleland look very much alike. Well, we'll bandage up your face, and you and I will keep that appointment with Pete Escobar at the Paradise Cafe tonight. Oh, well, good guy. Splendid idea, Kent. Will you do it, Captain Maddox? Well, it's against a better judgment. But Kent, I reckon I will. If we don't stop that pirate now, we won't have a minute's peace when we reach San Monica. Good. Thank you, Matt. That's the spirit, Captain. Now you better call the engine room and order full speed ahead. Yes, sir. Not much time left. We're going to keep that date. Hello, Higgins. Higgins. Captain Maddox speaking. Full speed ahead. Pile on all the steam to carry. We're heading due west to Maneo, and we've got to get there before midnight. <laughs> the Paradise Cafe, huh? It certainly looks like a tough joint. Yeah. What time is it, Captain? It's, uh, just midnight. Uh-huh. And there's Pete Escobar himself walking right. toward us. The big man with a scar on his cheek? Yes, that's him. 
I hope my disguise works. Well, these dim lights and the heavy cigarette smoke will help. Hello, Cleveland. You been in long? No, I just arrived, Pete. You've got your face covered with that bandage, eh? I am. So it makes you look like Maddox. Say, who's this mug you got with you? Clark Kent's my name. What'd you bring him along for, Wolf? Well, uh, I just It's this that... way, Escobar. I'd like to join your outfit. Yeah, he's a handy sort of guy, Pete. I thought we could use him. What's your trade? Well, I, uh, I'm a deep sea diver. Oh, deep sea diver, huh? Maybe we can use you. Come into the back room. We can talk better in private. All right. Sit down, Ken. You are off Thorpe's boat, the one it, eh? Yes. You know anything about that deep sea diving belly of his, the bathysphere? Well, sure. That's why he hired me. I operate it. Well, that's perfect, Cleveland. Just the man we're looking for. You're working for me now, Kent. Okay. What's the job? What are you going to do with Thorpe's bathysphere? Didn't you tell this guy what's on the fire, Cleveland? No, I didn't tell him a thing. Well, Kent, we're after gold. What? Two million dollars of it. Laying down at the bottom of the ocean. Gold? Oh, two million dollars? Yes, sir. And that's where you and Thorpe's bathysphere come in. But we let that go until later. Where'd you leave the ship, Cleveland? About a quarter mile offshore, just like you said. Good. Now listen. I got 20 guys out there in the barroom. The top of smoke I could find. As soon as we finish up here, we'll go out to the harbor and take over the one eater, lock, stock, and barrel. How are you going to take 20 men out to the ship? I got a big speedboat tied up at the pier. Oh. Well, what about the ship's crew? What are we doing? Dead men don't talk, Cleland. We'll take them off guard and tie them up. When we get out to sea, we'll toss them overboard. Hmm. Incidentally, what did you do with Thor? Uh, oh, we finish him. He won't bother us no more. See who that is, Cleland. Oh, wait a second. I'll go myself. Kent, look who's at the door. Cleveland. Yeah. He escaped from the ship. Yes, and he's telling Escobar who we are. So, Captain Matt. Yeah, it's up. Trying to put something over and feed Escobar, eh? Now look here, Escobar. Shut up. I'm going to get my boys and let them work over you. Kent, they trapped us. You're right. A gang of his will be here in a minute. Yeah, but what do we do, Kent? They'll kill us. They'll tear us to pieces. Get over by the door. I'm going to smash the electric light. The darkness will cause confusion when they get in here. All right, Kent, hurry. Now then. Maddox can't see me. High time Superman took charge here. I hate to do it, but I'll have to knock Maddox unconscious in order to take him out of here with me. I'll wait for the gang to get in and time the punch so he won't know who hit him. Okay, here they come. Okay, boys. Get in there. And mess them up good. Both of them. Now, they're in. This is my chance. Kent, help! Help! Oh. Ah, that did it. Knock Maddox cold. Now to sling him over my shoulder and get out while these thugs flounder around in the darkness. No use fighting my way past this mob. I'll smash through the wall. Here we go. There, we're through. And there's the harbor below me. Now, back to the ship. Up, up, and away! Red cloak streaming in the wind, Superman rockets through the night. Out across Manila Harbor to where the Manita rides at anchor like a ghost ship in the moonlight. Swiftly, Superman streaks down and lands on the deck. Down, down to the deck of the ship. Down. Captain Maddox, how do you feel? Oh, pretty shaky, Kent. What happened? How'd you get me back to the ship? Well, after you were slugged, I managed to get hold of you and, and pull you out and... Out of that room full of killers? Well, yes, it wasn't as difficult as it sounds. <sighs> they were fighting each other in the dark. Well, I just slipped through them. Kent, Captain Maddox. Oh, you're back. Cleveland escaped. Yes, we know, Professor. He's at the cafe. We just got out by the skin of our teeth. Kent, there's news for you, Professor. His scheme worked. You... You've learned why Escobar and Cleveland want my ship? It's not the ship, Professor. It's the bathysphere, the deep-sea diving bell. They need it to go down after sunken gold. Sunken gold? Yes. Funny, but I suspected that. You suspected it? But how? I might as well confess now, Kent. I'm going after that gold myself. You're what? Oh, behind. Yes. That was the confession that I couldn't make before. I couldn't make it until I was certain Escobar was after the same thing. But, Professor, I... I thought this expedition, the bathysphere, was to do research on marine life, strange fish. No, that story was false, Ken. I made it up to avoid the publicity that would follow if people learned that, that I was after millions in gold. Where did this gold lay, Professor Thorpe? At the bottom of Octopus Bay, 300 feet below the surface. I suspected that Cleland knew about the treasure the moment I saw that tattooed map on his chest. But I had to be certain. But, Professor... 
It doesn't seem possible that, that you're just a fortune hunter. Oh, not believe me, Kent, I'm not. When I tell you why I need that gold, you'll understand me better. I discovered the sunken Spanish gold ship 30 years ago. But how could you if she's down that deep? That time I was younger, Captain. One day I went down in a diving suit after tropical fish. I descended further than I've ever gone before. And I saw the hull of the ship beneath me. But it was impossible to stand the pressure. So I returned to the surface. Oh, then you can't be sure the gold is actually on board. Yes, Kent, it is. I investigated. I read ancient manuscripts until I came across one that told of the sinking of the galleon La Quinta in Octopus Bay near the island of San Monicum during the year 1786. She carried over two million dollars in gold. And not one penny of it was ever recovered. I see. But you said you had a reason for needing the gold. To build a laboratory, Kent. The greatest scientific institution ever created. A place where scientists could work for the betterment of mankind. Unworried by any thought of finances. That's been my life's dream. And with the gold from that treasure ship, I could make that dream come true. Professor, if that's what you want it for, I'm with you. Yes, and so am I. Thanks. Both of you. I knew I could depend on you. That sound can't off in the darkness. What is it? Oh, sounds like a speedboat coming this way. It's a launch, Kent. Jet, off our port bow. A launch? Professor, it's Pete Escobar and his gang. What? They're coming to take over the ship. No, oh, hi, Lorena. Stand by for the boating party and don't sign any party business. That's Escobar, all right. What do we do? No, they're too close. We can't get away. I know it. Oh, we're lost. They'll kill every one of us. Kent! Kent! Sunken gold, a $2 million treasure at the bottom of Octopus Bay. Will Escobar and his thugs capture the Juanita and the precious bathysphere, the only diving bell able to descend to a depth of 300 feet? Don't forget to tune in next time and follow this exciting story of adventure on the high seas with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics Magazine. Welcome back! Wow, another treasure hunt. Um, two million dollars. Um, you know, I... Okay, I'm not gonna. I could go into casting dispersions on the professor's dream, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but a lot of treasure hunt episodes here, um, and of course now there is the boarding party. This is a perfect, perfect cliffhanger here, um, and I can hardly wait to find out what's gonna happen here in part four. Um, because, uh, because this has had. This has been a pretty some pretty neat twist here i think so i'm going to look forward to seeing in part four how they're going to resolve this probably with a little help from superman definitely all right so let's go ahead and um i encourage everybody cast your vote for me at podcastalley.com and send your email uh on the show to adam at adamsweb.us for now this is adam graham signing off <laughs>